Hey guys, welcome to the Summit Heights Fellowship broadcast. My name is Edward Crouch and I'm the lead pastor here at Summit Heights. And before we get to our broadcast, I just wanted to say thank you for joining us. If you have a few minutes today, check out our website, summitheightsfellowship.com. And you'll learn all about our church. We have a great student ministry, an incredible children's ministry, preschool ministry. And we do small groups all over our community from Mineola to Quitman to Winsboro, Hawkins, even in Big Sandy. We would love to have you check us out one Sunday. If there's anything we could ever do for you, please take a few minutes, go to our website, fill out that prayer card on our website, and we would love to pray for you, reach out to you, or minister to you in any way we can. Again, thanks for joining us today. We hope you enjoy the broadcast. If there's any decisions or questions you have at the end of our broadcast, please reach out to us at our number on the screen or on our website. We would love to visit with you. Have a great day. Enjoy the broadcast. Amen. If you're at home watching, give these guys a round of applause, please. We, uh, we, the, the enemy tried to uh, get up early this morning and derail our worship, and he was not successful. So thank you, God, number one, and thank you, Brian and Jeff and Patty and Uriah and Derek and Glenn's back there and David Bright's running our Facebook Live. Thank you all so much. Um, incredible, incredible time of worship. Well, I'm excited to be here. This is my last Sunday of the of, of March. Edward uh, will be back next Sunday. Edward comes off sabbatical on Wednesday, and so man, it's been it's been a month, hasn't it? It started off. Uh, we were going to dive into this series of first importance and talk about the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ, and then uh, we kind of got interrupted, and we've transitioned a little bit, uh, still staying with that theme, but we've transitioned a little bit because this season, this this COVID-19 crisis is, uh, is, is causing us to take a step back. A few weeks ago, I mentioned that it's put us in sort of a burial type season. And I challenged you, what are we going to do in this time? What are we going to learn about ourselves? What are we going to learn about what God's trying to teach us in this time? And then what are we going to do with that? And, and last week, we literally talked about how we are going to respond to this crisis, different than the world responds. How are we as the church going to go out and make a difference while the world is freaking out and while the world is hoarding and while the world is um, focused on the bad news, how are we going to be focused on the good news and how are we going to take that and minister to our community? And so what I want to do today is I want to wrap up because I, I am, I'm ready to hand this thing back off to Edward. I'm so excited that he's coming back and uh, I want to wrap this up by sharing with you some good news. Many of you know I used to be a coach, and one of, one of my gifts, I wasn't the best tactical coach, but one of my strong gifts was I could motivate players, either in pregame speeches, halftime speeches, I could motivate players, and I could inspire them uh, to be, we did a lot of good things when I was a coach, we won games we shouldn't have won, we overachieved, and a lot of that had to do with I had a great group of girls that I coached, um, and then I was able to use my gift of motivation and inspire. But one of the things uh, as a coach, and if you've been a coach, you understand usually halftime is where you make your adjustments. Halftime is where you kind of chew on them a little bit and let them know everything you've done wrong up to this point, and this is how we're going to change it. Well, what I want to do today is I want to celebrate what God has been doing over the last week. If this were a halftime speech, there would only be one minor adjustment, and I'll get to that in just a second. But this would be like coming in at halftime of a football game, and you're up 35 to nothing, and you really have nothing to critique. You really have nothing that you need to work on except for maybe one minor detail, and so you just have nothing but praise. And so what I want to do today is I want to celebrate because I am sick and tired of turning on the news and hearing nothing but doom and gloom. 
I'm sick and tired of pulling up Facebook and seeing worldly posts of doom and gloom. What I want to do today is I want to give you some hope and I want to show you, if you've not seen yet, just how God is working in this week alone. And so I'm inviting you today to celebrate. I'm inviting you today to celebrate, but also know that as we celebrate, the game is not over. We still have to go out and continue to do what many of us have done this week. We still have to connect to God intimately, and we still have to allow him to show us and to teach us what he has in store for us that we can take to the outside world. But I want to celebrate for just a second. Track with me for just a second. This week alone, we have seen our small groups meet needs like never before. I, I have been amazed every time a name comes across my email of somebody that's either sick, having a surgery, having a baby. We had that happen. And I'm freaking out going, how are we going to help this person? Who's going to minister to this person during this shutdown? And I'll call that person and the first thing they will say is my small group is already taking care of it. My small group has already taken care of it. In fact, we had a, a young lady in our church give birth this week, and I came up to the office, and, and, uh, and all of a sudden, people just started bringing stuff up here and dropping it off, and they were saw in it, okay? And they were dropping it off, and I was like, what is all this for? And they said, this is for so-and-so. Their small group had taken the initiative to take care of them. Folks, that is what we have been yearning for, for years, that our small groups would be small extensions of our church. We have over 20 small groups that meet as an extension of Summit Heights Fellowship. Many of them have stepped up and begun to do things in the community. One of our small groups that meets at Holly Lake Ranch organized a system where they got word out to elderly residents or residents that either couldn't leave their house or didn't want to leave their house. And so what they did is they organized a, a, a team of people that would go out and buy supplies and then bring that to the people of their community. And the cool thing was, is they weren't just taking care of their small group. This was open to the entire Holly Lake Ranch. And so not only were they shepherding the people in their small group, not only were they ministering to the people in their small group, they had stepped into an evangelistic missionary role and started reaching more people by what they're doing. I've seen the last two weeks our Love One Food Distribution Ministry receive the first week 6,500 pounds of meat, and then this last Friday, 8,700 pounds of meat. Now, yes, they are adhering to the guidelines, and they have come up with creative ways to social distance and still receive the food that we need for this community and for all the communities that are being affected by this. I've seen volunteers come up here uh, and Lysol themselves and fill food boxes. We've been able to pass out food boxes. When the school shut down, we were able to move the backpack ministry here where we just filled food boxes and then the people would come and I would meet them outside and either hand them a food box or we would deliver the food boxes to those that had no transportation. I'm telling you, it's been amazing. Although giving has been down the last two weeks, our reserve was so good when all of this started and I've had more people reach out to me this week asking me how they can give and be a part. We've seen more traction in our community this week than we ever have. Facebook comments, Twitter comments, people calling the church, people sending emails that I've, I, I don't know who they are that saw our service last week or that talked to somebody. 
The food that I talked about just now, that has been expanded because now people are hearing that this church hasn't shut down, that this church is still moving forward, and that there's food here, and there's resources here, and that is expanding. It is crazy. Brian mentioned our Facebook service last week. These are crazy numbers. We reached over 4,000 people. So we had 2,600 views. That means 2,600 times somebody viewed our service last week. So Facebook estimates that out of 2,600 views, you reach a little over 4,000 people. We had over 50 people share the video. These are outrageous numbers, but here's the two numbers that excited me. We had 250 comments on the live stream. That means like 250 of you were not only watching, you were so engaged in the service that you commented on that. But here's the, here's the one that blows my mind. Out of 2,600 views, we had 1,850 people engage with our service. You say, well, what does that mean? Well, what that means is, is anybody that comments or likes the post, anybody that shares it and then somebody in their world comments or likes the post and then they share it and somebody comments and likes the post, 1,850 people all the way from here all the way to Germany last week engaged in our, in our message. You say, well, why do, why do you say all this? Why are, Sounds like you're bragging. Well, yeah, I am. Because when we first went to this, when this COVID-19 broke out, over and over and over, I kept hearing the language that the church is closed. Listen, the church is not closed. The church is growing. The church is expanding. And I know it's not just Summit Heights. I talk to my pastor friends all week long. They're getting the same traction on their live services. They're ministries are stepping up in ways they've never stepped up before. They're seeing the same numbers we are. Now listen, as Edward always says, I'm not a numbers man, but I'm a numbers man. Because listen, we've said it for years. It's not about how many butts we put in the seats. It's how many people we reach out there. Well, you want to know how many people we reached out there last week? 1,850 people. You better be clapping at home. Because here's... Here's what's happening, church. While COVID-19 tried to close the church, and while the government stepped in and said you can't have more than 10 people gather, and so we had to close the doors of the church, here's what's been happening that maybe you've seen and maybe you haven't. Small group leaders have become pastors. Small group leaders have become shepherds and pastors to their community. All week long, I get reports from small group leaders. And they're, they're keeping me in the loop, but they're doing what a pastor and a good shepherd would do. They're, they're ministering to their flock of people during this time because we can't gather corporately. And many people who a few weeks ago just called themselves, I'm, you know, I'm nothing but a little old small group leader. No, no, no. You are a shepherd. You are shepherding. You are pastoring. I've never been more excited for our small group ministry than I am right now. We're seeing servants become missionaries. Listen, we used to open these doors and people would come here and we would expect people to come here. And now people are being forced to, to take what we have here and take it out there. We get all this food and we get all this resources. And then I've seen it week after week after week, day after day after day, people coming up here and taking that stuff out into the community. All the while still following the rules of social distancing. Social distancing is not closing ministry, guys. I'm telling you, small group leaders have become pastors. Uh, servants have become missionaries. Here's what I'm real excited about. Dads have finally become the priests of their homes. Families are engaging with one another in the gospel. Isn't it amazing? 
When God strips everything off our calendar and we are forced to spend time at home with our families, how we as moms and dads are rising up. I'm hearing it over and over and over. Dads are at home. They're leading their families in prayer. They're leading their families in devotions. They're leading their families. Moms and dads are becoming the spiritual influencers that they were designed to be. Isn't that amazing? That is something to celebrate. Families are spending more time together than they ever have. We're getting more access to our kids than we've ever had before. And I'm hearing so many dads and so many moms tell me how they've stepped up and to begin to lead their families spiritually. This is awesome. Lay people, that's a church term. That's somebody that just attends church. Like they're not a ministry head, they're not a pastor or whatever. They have become preachers and evangelists. So many of you are engaging in our youth and children's ministries online and you're putting out content and you're sharing devotionals and you, you're taking my advice from last week. You've stopped sharing coronavirus memes and you're sharing gospel memes and you've become an agent of hope. You've become a preacher. You've become something you never thought you would be. And isn't it amazing how in this time, we're like Brian said earlier, what the devil intended to do to the church has only helped to advance the gospel. I believe the gospel has advanced more this week than probably any other time that I can remember post 9-11. I told you two weeks ago we were going to have opportunities. We were going to have opportunities to give. We were going to have opportunities to share. We were going to have opportunities to fill in gaps where people are scared. We were going to have opportunities to fill in gaps where people have no hope. And Summit, I have seen you do that this week. And not only have I seen you do it, but I've seen other churches do the same thing. And I'm convinced now more than ever, we need to ramp it up and keep it going. Now, I want to address something before we get to today's scripture. As I said earlier, this is my last Sunday. Edward's been on sabbatical since the last week of February. He comes back on Wednesday. And I want to, I feel it's important because... This is not, and this has not been, the Jake Connor show. I was overwhelmed last Sunday. As soon as I got off the stage, my phone began to blow up with text messages and Facebook messages and Facebook posts and Facebook tags and Twitter messages and emails and on and on and on. And I'm grateful and I'm thankful and I so appreciate all the encouragement over the last few weeks, many of you have reached out to me to tell me what a good job I've done or uh, how hard this must have been stepping into this during this season. And, and yes, uh, I've had to do that. And yes, it's been tough and all that stuff. But I, I want to say something. This is not about me. The reason Summit Heights kept going and will keep going when our senior leader can take a sabbatical is because we have great people here. We have great leadership. We have great elders. Paul Rogers, Russ Kearns, Jeff Masterson, Alan Sanders, Joe Fields. These men have been rocks over the last few weeks. These men have stepped up more in the last few weeks than I can ever remember an elder board stepping up. We have a great staff. David Bright, Ashley Connor, Kristen Walker, Paula Woodson, Jane McCoy, Brian um, Hanley, Jenny, Lori. Our staff is phenomenal. And the way our staff has been creative over the last few weeks, our children and our youth ministries have not skipped a beat because of the way that our youth and our children, the way that David and the way that Kristen and the way that Ashley has continued to minister and put out that content and keep up with their flocks has been unbelievable. We have great volunteers. 
I named our worship team a while ago. Our tech team, Derek Slick and Brandon Walker and Glenn Benbrook. Our volunteers, all of our small group leaders, all of our CR leaders, all the people that do various things that are so many that I can't even mention in the food ministry, in the backpack ministry, uh, those of you that come and help Ashley and do all these crafts, even though you've been kept away from this building, you've kept going. We have great people here. Now, I want to say this, and I want to look right into the camera, and I don't know if he's watching. But church, let me tell you, the reason Summit Heights can endure this is because we have a great leader, and his name is Edward Crouch, for the past 15 years who has led us and who has trained us for such a time as this. You know the mark of a good leader? You know the mark of a great leader? Is that when he can step away for his own health and his own rest, and then a crisis comes in, that the people that he has invested in, the people that he has trained, the people that he has coached, and the people that he has led can continue the ministry and never miss a beat. Yeah. Edward, I'm so thankful for your investment in me, and I'm so thankful for the investment that you've made in this staff, and we look forward to having you back Wednesday. You are a phenomenal, phenomenal leader. Now, if you have your Bibles, I want you to turn to Philippians chapter 1, because I think with all of this good news, and I've already said it, it's almost as if this crisis has served to advance the gospel. It's almost as if what Brian mentioned a while ago, that what the enemy intended to do for harm, God has stepped in and has actually done for good. While the enemy intended to shut the gospel down, God has stepped in and actually advanced the gospel. It reminds me of a writing that Paul wrote to the Philippian church. He starts off in Philippians chapter 1 in verse 3. He starts off, I thank my God in all my remembrance of you. That sounds similar, right? I just did that to all of our volunteers and to all of our people. I truly thank you. Paul says, always in every prayer of mine, for you all are making my prayer with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. And listen to verse 6. And I am sure of this, that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Christ Jesus. It is right for me to feel this way about all of you because I hold you in my heart for you are all partakers with me of grace both in my imprisonment and in the defense and the confirmation of the gospel so Paul's in prison while he's writing this and he starts off this letter in prison and he starts it off not doom and gloom he doesn't start off focusing on the doom and gloom of him being in prison. He starts it off by basically doing what I just did, by listing the good things. He's thankful for these people in Philippi that have partnered with him in the gospel. And you're about to find out why in verse 8. He says, For God is my witness how I yearn for all of you with the affection of Christ Jesus. And it is my prayer that your love may abound more and more with knowledge and all discernment so that you may approve what is excellent and so be pure and blameless on the day of Christ filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ to the glory and the praise of God and here's what he says in verse 12 remember he's in prison remember he got arrested remember he's the guy that was going out and preaching the gospel in synagogues Paul was the guy that was preaching the gospel people were getting saved he would start churches he would train church leaders then he would go to the next town and do the very same thing. Well, now he's in prison. Now he can't do that anymore. And so what happened when he got put in prison? Verse 12, I want you to know, brothers, that what has happened to me has really served to advance the gospel. 
Listen to me. Every time the enemy steps in and tries to shut something down, God always steps in and advances the gospel more. It's been happening for over 2,000 years. It happened to Paul when he got put in prison. It's happening today through this crisis. I'm telling you. Because in verse 13, he says, It has become known throughout the whole imperial guard and to all the rest that my imprisonment is for Christ. And most of the brothers, in verse 14, having become confident in the Lord by my imprisonment are much more bold to speak the word without fear. I hope you're as excited at home as I am up here. (laughs) Most of the brothers, because of Paul's imprisonment, became more confident, became more bold, and began to speak the word without fear. Church, I'm telling you, that's exactly what's going on right here, right now. Many of you... Because of this COVID-19 crisis, many of you, because these doors have been shut, many of you have stepped into your fear. Many of you have stepped up and become more than a small group leader. Many of you have stepped up and become more than just a servant. Many of you have stepped up and become more than just an attender of church. You've become pastors. You've become preachers. You've become missionaries. Many of you have become more bold in sharing the gospel. And the gospel has been advancing. Just like Paul's imprisonment was intended to shut down the spreading of Christianity, it actually advanced it. I've often wondered how many of Paul's disciples, how many of the people that Paul mentored, had Paul not been put in prison, how many of them would have never stepped up and grown? And I'm beginning to wonder now if maybe, just maybe, this is not a wake-up call for churches and church leaders and church people to say, listen, you don't need, per se, Jake and Edward and the elders to do all of this ministry. All of us have been called to advance the gospel. And maybe, just maybe, in this season of burial, one of the things God is trying to teach us as Christians is that it's time for us to step up. Step into our fear. Step into things that we never dreamed we could do. Step into maybe a calling that we've been running from for so long. And I'm not talking about a calling of surrendering to the, to the mission field and moving to Africa. I'm talking about a calling of just walking across the street and engaging with your neighbor with the gospel. Maybe stepping into uh, teaching and preaching and sharing and talking and serving and giving. This is a season for you, for me, and for all of us to step up. I, I, I was sharing with Edward yesterday. We were talking. I said, If I've learned one thing about myself over the last three weeks is I've learned that once I push through my fear of leading, that I can lead. I'll make mistakes and I'll own them and it's not been perfect, but one of my um, insecurities over the last 15 years has always been being the leader. And if God has taught me anything in this season for me, it's that, yeah, when pushed, When prodded, when forced to, I can lead. What's he pushing you to do? What's he prodding you to do? What is he forcing you to step into during this season? For the Philippians that Paul was teaching... Paul's imprisonment forced them to be more bold. It forced them to speak the word without fear. It forced them to step out of their comfort zone. And because they did, the gospel advanced. I believe this week was a starting point for the same thing to happen right here in Holly Lake, Hawkins, Big Sandy, Mineola, Lindell, Winsboro, uh, America, Quitman, America. And I know I left somebody out, but you, you, you know what I'm saying, right? It's time 
to advance the gospel. And so what's the take home today? Well, the take home is pretty simple and it's two part. It's like I said earlier, it's like giving a halftime speech and you've got nothing but good things to say. So let me address the good. Okay. We've just come off an incredible week. The week has been unbelievable. People are stepping into roles. People are meeting needs. Small groups are flourishing. Giving is, is doing well. Um, our food ministry is kicking. We're meeting needs in the community. And so what I would say to that today is stay the course. Just stay the course. Keep doing what you're doing. And remember verse 6 of this passage. He, Paul says, I'm sure of this, that he who began the good work is going to bring it to completion. This ain't over. Listen, as good as last week was, this ain't over. This may just be the beginning. We don't know. We talked about that last week. And so whatever this looks like, how all, however long this lasts, stay the course. You are the pastor and the shepherd of your flock. I talk about this all the time in leadership training. When I'm training leaders, I talk about this all the time. Every one of us has a circle of influence. A lot of us try to deny that, but every one of us has a circle of influence. We impact people in our lives daily. We're going to either impact them for good or we're going to impact them for bad. But we do impact people in our lives daily. That's our circle of influence. You are the pastor of your circle of influence. You are the shepherd of your circle of influence. You are the missionary to this community. You are the hands and the feet of Christ to this community during this season. Stay the course. Keep meeting needs. Keep reaching out. Engage with people that have no hope. Engage with people that are fearful. Engage with people that are scared. You are the missionaries. You're the shepherd in your circle of influence, but you're also the missionary uh, to the community. Stay the course. You're the preacher. You're the agent of hope. You're the one with the words. You're that, that jar of clay that's carrying that treasure of the gospel, of the good news of Jesus Christ, of the hope that people in your circle of influence and outside of your circle of influence need. You can do it. You've been doing it. Stay the course. You are the church. You are the church. I'm not the church. You're the church. We are are the church. And I told you last week, I ended last week with, uh, with a statement, you know, we've, we've proven over the years that we can go to church. Now let's see if we can be the church. Summit, I believe we stepped in. We took the first step this last week to actually being the church. And an Acts 2 church. Meeting needs. Stay the course. Advance the gospel. Now I did say <laughs> that if I could tweak anything, this halftime speech. It's been great. We've been doing great. But if I could just bring one word of caution and encouragement, it would be this. Because in verse 14, Paul was clear to say, not all of the brothers became more confident in the Lord. Not all of the brothers spoke the word without fear. He said most of them did. Most of them. And so we can deduce that not all of them did. And so while most of us have engaged our communities this week. I am aware that not all of us have stepped through that fear yet. Now listen, this is, not a, this is not a spanking. This is not a condemning part of the message. This is as much of encouragement as anything else. Because if you're like me, you love to stand on this side of the wall of fear because it's comfortable and it's safe. Can I just encourage you with a statement that is not condemning. But I think we need to hear this. Social distancing does not mean social isolation. Let me say that again. Social distancing does not mean social isolation. We need you. And the reality is you need us. Listen, 
I know we've been called to stay six feet away from each other, and I know we've been called to not meet in groups of less than ten, but there are still ways that we can engage with one another. And my fear is for some of us, we've taken social distancing to mean social isolation. And church, we need you here. You can't be here physically, but you can engage with us online. You can engage with us via text message. You can engage with us via email. Your community still needs you. You have family that still needs you. And so if I could caution and if I could just uh, ramp it up and encourage you with one thing, I would like for the chapter of Summit Heights, when this is all said and done, to be different than what Paul said. Paul said most of his people people were emboldened to advance the gospel. I want to be able to write a chapter in the history of this church and in the church in general that says all, Amen. all of our people were able to step through their fear. All of our people were able to engage with the people of the church and the people uh, that are not of the church, all for the purpose of advancing the gospel. Now, I want to close with this, and I want to be clear. We're celebrating today. We're two weeks away from Easter Sunday. We're two weeks away from the single greatest event that defines who we are and what we believe. That while men and women were lost in their sins and were hopeless, the God of the universe stepped down from heaven and became human. And that he lived for 33 years and he did public ministry for three of those years. He never once sinned and then he went to the cross on, on, on Good Friday and he was punished for our sins. And then on Resurrection Sunday, what we call Easter Sunday, he rose from the dead. He defeated sin and he conquered death once and for all. And humanity at that moment had hope. And that hope that came into the world 2,000 years ago is the same hope that we carry today. Church, you are hope dealers. And hope is contagious. Colossians 1.27, Christ in you, the hope of glory. You're carrying something far more contagious than any virus. You are a jar of clay, as Paul wrote, as we talked about last week, that is carrying a treasure that surpasses all. You have the hope of the gospel. The gospel that I just ran through really quick. The gospel that says men and women don't have to be lost in their sin. That men and women don't have to go through this life with no hope. That sins can be forgiven and hope can be restored and joy can be restored by those that put their faith and trust in Christ Jesus. And so while I've just spent the last 30 minutes talking to the church, I'm wondering if there's anybody out there today who doesn't fit that category, who has never put their faith and their hope and their trust in Jesus Christ. Jesus is what is going to get us through not only this. Jesus is what's going to get us through this life. And I wonder if you today would have the courage to just get on your knees and maybe for the first time ever cry out to the living God and accept the free gift of salvation that Christ offers you. And if you would be willing to do that, I would encourage you to send me an email so we can set up a time Tuesday or Wednesday where we can talk because I would love to visit with you. Church, listen, I wrote this down and this is how I'm going to close the message and the band can come back. Because I began to think to myself, how did the good news, how did this message of hope, how did the gospel advance in the early church? Faith in God, loving deeds, and enduring hope. Faith in God, loving deeds, and enduring hope. How will the good news and the message of the gospel continue to advance in our community? Faith in God. Talked about this two weeks ago. Your faith in God 
is what's going to continue to advance the gospel. Your trust that God is doing something bigger in this season than this virus is doing. Your trust that God is actually moving in this. That no matter how bad this gets, no matter how long this lasts, is that our faith knows and our faith trusts that God is doing something incredible. And so our faith in God, that trusting that God's in control, trusting that God is still moving, trusting that God is still advancing, trusting that he's still raising people up to serve and raising people up, trusting that he's still saving people and, and, and breathing life spiritual life into people trusting that he has a bigger plan for this that's number one that's what it's going to take for us to advance the gospel faith in God number two is our loving deeds continue to do the things you've done this week continue to do the things you've done this week do more you're making a difference church you are making a difference the compliments that I've received that this, this last week, I project those back on you because you're doing the work. You're in the community. You're serving. You're meeting needs. You're giving financially. Our faith in God and our loving deeds will continue to advance the gospel. And finally, our enduring hope. Listen, the world is looking to us during this time. We need to be projecting light and hope because we know what the world doesn't know that Sunday's coming at some point Sunday's coming and this too shall pass and so church my last words to you before Edward comes back is let's advance the gospel let's preach Jesus Let's keep our faith. Let's continue to love in our deeds. And let's continue to endure in our hope and engage this world with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Father God, you are good. And today we acknowledge how good you are. And in the midst of darkness and in the midst of bad news and in the midst of the world going chaotic, Father, we acknowledge that there is hope in you, that we can trust you, that Jesus Christ is the same today as he, as he was then, as that he will ever be. And God, that you have a plan. I'm so thankful for those that have stepped up and have been more bold, that have served more and loved more. I'm praying for those that have yet to step into this, God, that you don't take their fear away. Move them into that fear because that's where they find you. You have called us to be the church and you have called us for such a time as this. And God, I'm excited about what you're going to do. And lastly, I thank you for Edward Crouch. I'm thankful he was able to rest for 31 days. God, I pray you would strengthen him as he steps into this this week to lead us, that you would strengthen him, guard his heart. And God, I pray, I pray for a movement like we've never seen before. Thank you, in Jesus' name, amen. Hey guys, welcome back. We hope you enjoyed the broadcast today. And if there's any decision you felt like God is leading you to make today, we would encourage you to uh, make that decision and to go online. There's a prayer tab on our website that you can go to. We'd love to pray for you. We would also love for you, if you accepted Christ today, to send us a text. We have a number at the bottom of the screen that you can text us the word accept if you accepted Christ, or if you would like to know more about baptism, just shoot us a text with the word baptize. 
to that number on the screen and we'll get to you, I promise you. Hey, have a great day and listen, if you're looking for a great church and you don't have a church home, come visit us one Sunday. We have two services, one nine, one at 11. We'd love to see you. Have a great week.